morning and welcome back to the channel. Today we're working on the TT again. Uh, this needs an oil and oil filter change, something that's really easy to do yourself. Save yourself a few quid, uh, not having to take it to the garage. Uh, we've got some bits and bobs to look at. So we've got the oil, which is a 15, uh, sorry, I'll say that again, it's a 5W30. We've got an oil filter and the washer that needs replacing on the drain plug. So when you take the drain plug, you need to replace that. Uh, this, com this company provides a nice kit. I got this from CSP, car service packs off eBay. They even provide you with a funnel, look at that. A disposable cardboard funnel, gloves, a wipe, an oil pad that opens up to go under your car so you don't get oil on your nice clean driveway. Um, I'm also going to use Nice big sheet of cardboard because I've just jet washed my drawer, I don't really want any oil on it. And the dreaded oil catcher, these are well worth the investment because you're not really supposed to be putting oil down the drain nowadays. You need to catch it, take it to your local tip where they'll have facilities to get rid of it. Um, I'll show you how this works later. Okay, so under the car now. Now make sure, now you see that little, let me point to it, see that little thing there, that little rubber. It's like a rubber hockey puck. That's what you use to jack the car up with the jack. You can see the car is actually still connected to that side. And I put it on jack stands. Now I put it on the subframe here near the front suspension. Because what you need to do is avoid this big plastic underplate that we need to take off. Because the air oil filter is hidden up there. So we need to take this bottom shield off which involves taking out some torque screws along the back here. These are T30s. I start just by taking these back ones. I can never remember what holds this on and what doesn't because there's so many fasteners under here you wouldn't believe it. So I'm going to take the Torx nuts off and then I'm going to investigate what else is holding it on and report back. Okay, we're ready to go with the oil. I've, um, I've loosened the nut off. I've got the oil catch can in place. Remember, I always say this now because I got caught out once. There's a there's a plug to take out here and there's also one on the top here to let the air out. Otherwise the oil goes everywhere. Because <laughs> the air's got nowhere to go and it just starts spitting out through that hole and covers you and the, the drive. So you need to be careful when you do this because the oil isn't just going to drop straight down. It's going to come out in an arc. So I'm already a little bit worried that I'm too close. So. I might open it a bit gingerly to make it dribble into the old catch can rather than coming completely out. We'll, we'll give it a go. Let's see what happens. There she comes. Quite a long thread on these. As predicted, it went everywhere. <laughs> so we need to follow the arc of the oil to make sure you don't, don't get it everywhere. Okay, well we have our first fail for car service packs. Um, the washer is captive on this bolt it doesn't come off so there's no point sending me a new washer because I can't get the old one off. So I mean I'm going to have to reuse this. Thankfully the washer looks like it's in perfect condition. Um, so I'll feed that back to them because that's a bit of a fail. Uh, I'm not too concerned because uh, this looks in really good nick so I'm going to put this back in now that the oil is just dripping and then we'll take the filter off. So dear Mr Audi please tell me how the hell you're supposed to get these off when they're tight. There is literally no room here. If you've got one of those oil filter socket things, you can get the socket on, but you can't get anything onto the socket because there's a massive great cross member in the way. Nobody wants to dismantle their engine to get the oil filter off. And around the oil filter, there is literally no room to get any kind of oil filter grabby device. Uh, I've got a few different ones here. I'm going to try that one. I've got one with a chain on. This one might be better, but 
I'm going to have to turn the camera off because this is going to be so much of a struggle to get it loose. I don't think I can do it one-handed. Well, I have managed to get it undone. What I had to do in the end was take this trim piece, this plastic trim piece, this one here, look. So I had to take this off. And it's just held in by these, these little push clips. Uh, I've managed to lose two of the centres. God knows where they've gone, I'll have to find them. I have got some spares of these somewhere, I might have to hunt them out. Once you get this off, it does give you like an inch or so more clearance, you can actually get in there. Still isn't easy, you complete pain in the backside to get undone. Once you get it moving, you can get, get it off from underneath. So I'm going to unwind it from underneath and let the oil drain out, and then we'll look at putting the new filter on. Right, so I've got this top panel back on. I used some clips that I had for the Lexus, which actually work way better. Hello Audi, perhaps you should use these ones. Because then the middle doesn't fall out and disappear into the engine, never to be found again. The, uh, the oil filter's in. So a new one's in. And what a joy it is to take the old one out. Because this is full of oil, you have to then lower it, and you can't get it out because of this, and it won't fit through here. So you have to tip it and finagle it and get it out round here. Meanwhile dropping oil everywhere. So you need to have a tray underneath to catch everything. Like this. Or a very thick piece of cardboard. All your driveway is curtains, you know. Anyway, it's in and it's hand tight. You don't really need to do these up super tight because then you have this trouble getting them back off again. So now all we have to do is fill it up with oil and dip the engine and then we'll got to put the cover back on underneath so not long to go now right so I put some oil in just so I could see some oil on the dipstick and run the engine just for a short while just to see there's no oil coming out around the filter and out the sump before we put the plate back on underneath so I'm going to do that now we're going to push the plate back on and screw it in in the back make sure we get the ones in the wheel arches at either side remember then we can drop it down and check the dipstick. Right, we're putting the bottom plate on. Now, with this, what you need to look at is these tabs along the front. Now, the straight ones go under this plastic bit that stays when you take the plate off. So there's a piece of black plastic which remains there when you take this off. So, first one goes under, then there's one with like a little ski jump on it. They, you can still see them. Next one is under, and then it's a ski jump one, under, ski jump, and then under. So you need to get all those in, and you also have to remember that you need to get these sides under as well, otherwise it won't, it won't go down at the back. So I have it, so it's tipped at 45 degrees, pull it in at 45 degrees, so it's almost touching the ground at the back, get these tabs in position, get the two sides in, and then you can lift it up, and I've just got two of the screws in at the back to hold it in position. Now all we need to do is put the six or seven, I think I've lost some to be honest, uh, I think over the years as it's been serviced by Audi, they've, they've lost one and then put it in. So we've got, I've got six torques to put all around the back, and then the ones in the wheel arch, like the speary shaped ones, which are just a single twist, 90 degree twist, and then we put them in and then it can come down off the axle stands. Right, so the plate is all now on, all the screws are in, so I'm going to jack her up now and take the axle stands out and then we'll just dip the engine and then it's job done. Okay, so she's back on the ground now, I've checked the oil, that's fine, topped it up. It took around four litres, maybe a little bit more. Um, that's pretty much it. I'll go through how to reset the service indicator in case, I mean this car had spark plugs quite recently, it doesn't need the air and cabin filter just yet. So I'm going to reset the service thing, I'll show you how to do that next. Uh, but after that, that's about it. Right, we're going to have a go at this. We need to turn the ignition on while holding the right button. And then when service comes up on the little display, I have to press the left button. Now, I have to hold that down first, turn the ignition on, and then press the left one. 
and you can see service in 9,300 miles or whatever that was. So that's it. You have to do it quite quick. So hold down the right button, hold down the right button, turn on ignition, and then this will say service in the red bit. And as soon as you see service, let go of that one and press the left one, and it'll give you the service interval, and then it resets it so you get the, still get the service message every time. Great, so I hope you've enjoyed this, well, more than I did anyway, because it was a bit of a pain. But I don't know how much that would have saved you getting the garage to do that. I mean, that's going to be at least an hour, maybe more in labour, plus the cost of their oil, unless they allow you to set your own. So it's well worth doing yourself. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like and all that good stuff. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, bye.